Audio Jungle. Welcome to the Hus Guys Podcast. Oh yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Husk Guys podcast. Uh, we are pumped for this one. We've got a very special guest today, someone who needs no introduction, but I'm going to provide a quick introduction for you anyways. Uh, he is a 2004 inductee to the Nebraska Football Hall of Fame, a, a two-time first-time first-team All-Big 8 performer with 156 career tackles, including the infamous Billy Sims fumble recovery late in the fourth quarter of Nebraska's 17-14 win over Oklahoma. Husk Guys, I am pumped to introduce you to Governor Pillen. Governor Pillen, thanks for joining us today. Hey, d- thanks a million for having me. Uh, privilege. Uh, you guys uh, uh, create a ton of energy, uh, help Husker fans be fired up and excited to cheer on our Huskers. And, you know, the thing that's been going on forever that's so awesome about Nebraska athletics and in particular football, it's the one thing that brings all of us together. It is. Uh, no matter how we might see the world today or tomorrow, but uh, that is the one thing that brings us all together. And we can debate and critique and call plays, and it's uh, it's just good, good stuff. We've been doing it forever. Absolutely. For me, ever since I could, uh, first memories is listening to Lyle Bremser on the radio. Mm-hmm. He's really one of the iconic voice legends. And I, I got to meet on the campaign trail about a year ago, a little before, uh, a little more than a year, his grandson. Oh, awesome. That's cool. pretty, really cool. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. That's great. Well, yeah. So before we dive in, our sponsors, which is the company that Zach and I created, Pipeline Jerky. I know you've had the opportunity to, to experience and work with it a little bit, Governor Fillon, but this is a, a you know, we'll, again, we're Nebraska fans. The only thing we think about is how can we help the program. For, with every bag that you buy, we're giving a royalty directly back to the offensive line to make the pipeline, rebuild the pipeline from scratch. So, Giving them a big plug, and and Governor Pillen, I know you've been a supporter, so we appreciate your support as well. Yeah, and and uh, and also want to tell you, uh, as I've said, uh, every Nebraskan, if they had all the data, would support us sending troops down to the southern border. And by the way, we're going to do it again, and uh, being able to uh, meet all the troops. And then, thanks for uh, sharing Husker jerky. They uh, they it lit them up like a Christmas tree. So Absolutely. when any Nebraskans away from home, and there's a connection. It's really good stuff. So thanks for that. Absolutely. No, we really appreciate the the support and uh, uh, the support, obviously, for the uh, offensive line as well. So we know that every good team, every good program starts up front. It might might not be the biggest, might not be the prettiest, but you know we're gonna get it done. So we'll it. next man up, we're we're falling like flies out there, but uh, our our boys keep stepping up. Next man up. You know the the coolest part about what's taken place in the last several weeks. It's really easy to start making excuses. Absolutely Some. none. 100% positive. Hey, we've got guys that can step up and, you know, uh, uh, Ethan Piper, great leader, just saying, Hey, next guy, I'm going to help him and he's going to be as good or better than me. Yeah. That's, that's the epitome of what's been going on uh, that coach rules getting back is that, uh, that, that's going that went on a long, long time ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you're a starter, your job immediately was to make sure the guys below you, you help them become better than you. Yeah. That's the ultimate give up team absolutely absolutely it's not terribly different than the people yeah. we're at you know you gotta, you gotta look forward into the future and you know it's, it's our job to be stewards of the land and stewards of, of of everything that we've been gifted with and blessed with to uh do the best with what we've got and leave it better than the uh, after that leave it better than what we found make it better for the next generation that's nebraska way it is there you go well, so governor i'd love to go all the way back uh and i would love to start there so you're you're homegrown in nebraska um, would love to understand kind of your path to Nebraska, how you chose to go play there as opposed to other places, you know, your recruiting story, you know, h- how did you get to Nebraska? How'd you choose it? Well, you got to remember, uh, you know, you got to remember. So, uh, you know, I'm of the vintage. I can remember, I was old enough to remember, uh, when, uh, Bob Devaney, uh, uh had the first sellout in 1962 with against mm-hmm. Missouri. Yep. And, uh, you know, I was outside messing around and I remember my mom coming in, coming out and saying, Jim, you got to come in and watch a football game. And that happened to be Missouri. So that, you know, and that stadium has been filling up ever since then, which is incredible. But, you know, you got to remember in those days, <clears throat> um, there are, you know, there's only one college football game on every, every week. And, uh, if you love football, you watch that. And then, 
Nebraska was on every week at one o'clock, one mm-hmm. o'clock. And uh, so, you know, you were tuned to Lyle Brimser. We'd work, and if uh, we if we had a transistor radio, you get to get to listen. And so there was only, it, it was nothing, I was no different than any other kid. We Every one of us dreamed of playing for the Husker. That was that was our dream. That's awesome. So, so that was really the only option. Uh, that, like there it. was no there was no recruiting process. Are you kidding? Yeah. With the day, <laughs> uh, you, uh, my brother Cleet walked on. Uh, that helped uh, maybe for the coaches and maybe who I was. But uh, you know there was there was uh, a phone call for phone call from coach my senior year from the Cotton Bowl. Got invited down for one recruiting visit, and uh, you know. Uh, just uh, got my fingers crossed and uh, was was fortunate to uh, get a scholarship. My year, my senior year was 1974, and what changed that year that was really interesting was that uh, scholarship offers went from 45 down to 30. Uh-huh. So, oh, that okay. was a really uh, that was a big deal, and uh, that was really important uh, for Coach Osborne at that time uh, because <clears throat> and, you know had to figure out how to beat Oklahoma. They had a lot of speed. And so mm-hmm. uh, speed was a big direction and how fast I could run uh, played a key role in being able to get a scholarship. And I was fortunate enough to run fast enough to get that. But uh, there was, uh, what I remember is uh, there were 11 Nebraska kids that got scholarships. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, uh, we were dubbed the elite 11. And, uh, you know, those are just things you, you, you know, you pinch yourself and how I was fortunate enough to get to be a part of that. And for all of us that got the chance to wear a Husker red, I mean, it's, uh, it, it was a special, special, uh, time of life. And we learned so much from coach Osborne, you know, having him be our coach, how could we be so blessed? You know, it is, as all of us tell him, he, he impacted our lives in ways that, you know, back then we weren't even mature enough to understand, but uh, every day after you start getting it, now, did, awesome. did you know, you say you were early in the Tom Osborne did. Um, did you know at that time that he would become the legend that he ended up becoming? Well, I don't know if uh, I was mature enough to figure anything out from a legend <laughs> perspective or anything, but but I will tell you that uh, uh, getting to play for Coach, he carried himself so uniquely and uh, he cared about you so deeply and it wasn't any rah-rah stuff, but uh, he had such a presence with you that, you know, you'd just run through a brick wall. You did not, you did not want to disappoint him. Uh, you know, I, I have a, it's a horrible memory, but it's reality of life, right? My senior year, our first game was in Alabama, mm-hmm. played in Birmingham. Uh, we had a good football team. Uh, we ended up getting beat. We beat them my junior year. I had a really good game uh, against Ozzie Newsome and Tony Nathan and all that stuff. We should have beat, and that was Coach's really first big win against uh, Bear Bryant. Right. Cool, cool memory. The next year we play them in Birmingham. They're preseason number one. The, I'm preseason, yeah. Uh, they were a very good football team, but we were good, and uh, uh, there was a key drive. They they got uh, the ball on, on uh, their own three-yard line, and there was a key third down play in that drive. And uh, the next morning, uh, they converted it. And the next morning, we're watching the film, and Coach Osborne ran it back and forth. And he never called me out. He just said, "Gee, we got a we got a fifth year senior lining up wrong in this formation." That's all. He ran it back three times, went on, and I just said, "That absolutely will not happen." However much more I got to study, however much more I got to work. I am not making another mental mistake. That won't happen. And, you know, those are just how you react. Absolutely. Because of who Coach is. He didn't raise his voice, didn't call me out by name. He could have, should have probably. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, that that's the kind of coach he was, extraordinary leader that every one of us gave everything up for him. A lot of that. Yeah, yeah. But, so Zach and I have, we're, consider ourselves historians of, of the game, and we've gone deep on that 1978 season. So. <laughs> You come in, you come into the season. Actually, this is, I mean, a true story. I, I ended up rewatching the Oklahoma game last night. I was texting my dad late in the night. He was a freshman that year and said after oh. the uh, the Oklahoma game, you know, they took the took the goalposts out and um, you know carried them down down downtown. 
So that's like, you know, yeah, I've never, it seems like everybody, anybody I've ever met was on that goalpost. Really? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's like, last time my wife's like, what on earth are we watching right now? Like, this is, hang on, this is important. This is the 1978 game. Yeah, so we will, but, but help, help set the stage for folks. I know that you're very frequently, uh, you know, that, that game is frequently brought up for you because of the fumble recovery, but help set up the stage for how important that game was. We lost Oklahoma six straight times, right? And it led up to a huge, huge matchup. I think I think it's a, maybe a piece that's good for all Huskers to recognize maybe what some of the kids are going through today. Mm-hmm. Because there was, I mean, we won a lot of games. We we believed, we knew we would win every game, but the hardcore reality, there was nobody in the locker room that had ever beaten Oklahoma. Right. Uh, uh, we went through my sophomore year. Uh, you know, we had an awesome, we had a great, we were preseason number one in the country, mm-hmm. and we get beat by a halfback pass and flea flicker. I mean, we were the way better o- team than Oklahoma. They beat us in Memorial Stadium. Uh, my junior year, I mean, we got slogged uh, down in that was a rough down one. In Norman. And uh, probably the greatest memory for all of us and my teammates was how <clears throat> Coach Osborne, we went through a process starting in the spring, going through the fall. And we knew we were going to be, we had a hundred percent belief. There was not a shadow of a doubt in any of our minds. And, and quite honestly, they had a great, great football. They were a better football team than us, but we had a strategy and a plan uh, that we were going to win. And uh, to give you an example, uh, <clears throat> on that final drive, uh, I remember there was a timeout and going over and uh, talking to the to Coach Van Zandt. And then Coach Osborne came up and says, "You know, we, you know, we got to have a play. We got to have something happen." And I just remember very, very calmly, just said, "Hey, Coach, don't worry. Something good's going to happen. We'll be okay." And that was just absolutely the belief of everybody. And and uh, a few years back, we were on a radio show with Tommy Sorley, who was our quarterback, and we talked about that. And, and Tom's comment was so cool because it's exactly he said. Well, you, we were on the sideline. Somebody says, well, you know, if that, he hadn't have fumbled, they go in and win. And Tommy pipes in and goes, no, we were on the sideline. We'd have got the ball back with 245 left, and there yeah. was not a shadow of a doubt we'd go down and score, score again. Yeah. You play a time. Yeah. I get goosebumps telling you that now because, uh, and that's what I talk as governor. We have to believe as Nebraskans we are the best in every discipline of what we do. We can, we can win at anything, and we do. We just need to now start bragging a little more about it because uh, that that's what Coach Osborne gave this state and Bob Devaney, the belief we can compete with anybody, and uh, that that's really cool and the greatest place in the world. Amen, amen. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I'd love to yeah, carry that through the present day. I think rule is bringing a lot of that back um, in a lot of ways, but I, I guess the first question I'd have is, is you know, what do you think has changed the most from when you played, you know, from when you played to the game today? What do you think the biggest changes have been? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the exposure, <clears throat> because it was Nebraska, uh, the exposure was great, uh, even though we didn't have any of the technology because it was one game and it was the game, uh, you know, uh, players back in the 70s were under a pretty, pretty bright light, mm-hmm. no matter where you went, whatever, simply because it was it was the game in town and, and there wasn't all the noise of all the other places and we played at the same time every week so nobody had to you know it was one o'clock no lights believe it or not no lights we didn't ever play under under lights in memorial stadium there wasn't such a thing we played i think uh i think in my time we played uh bowl games at night so the orange bowl liberty bowl uh sugar bowl whatever and then uh festival festival i think was afternoon but uh yeah we played at alabama at night we played at lsu at night uh, there, I'm sure there was one or two others in the preseason, but uh, everything was at one o'clock, so the light was bright. I would say, I would say the fan scrutiny uh, was intense. Might at times even been more intense. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the, uh, just believe it or not, uh, during my time frame, uh, yeah, Husker fans were tough. Husker fans uh, were not thrilled with getting beat for right. six straight years or whatever it is by Oklahoma. Uh, no matter what we did, that was, you know, that was a game. And it wasn't a good start to my senior year getting beat by Alabama. Uh, so, you know, that, that, uh, the, those things draw your team together. Uh, I would say big change maybe would be, uh, 
you know, it's, uh, it was, it was very, very physical, uh, very, very run heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we had some great court, uh, Vince Veragamo when he transferred to Nebraska, I mean, he could spin the ball like nobody oh, yeah. that opened up, uh, uh, us, but we played against a lot of run stuff. Uh, but there would be, you know, I remember going against K-State and, uh, they had a kid, uh, that could throw the ball and a coach that, uh, you know, did a empty backs fields and, Nobody had ever done that. So mm -hmm. it was very, very physical. I mean, I had a coach that if I got a tackle, getting the tackle wasn't good enough. I, He wanted me to use my head and pop him right in the chin. And if I didn't get that done, it wasn't, it didn't grade out, even though I had, even though I tackled him. Ground, ground, yeah. yeah, absolutely. One of them to pop him in the mouth, no matter how big he was. And I'd say, you know, some of these guys are 50 pounds bigger than me. Are you kidding? But that's what we had to do. That's good. That's awesome. No, it was, it was obviously a very physical game back then, for sure. I mean, and I think Oklahoma only pa attempted two passes in the 1978 game. So it was 63 runs, something like that. And uh, they put the ball in the yeah. around nine times, I believe, that game. And I think that probably goes to how the way you guys were playing. I mean, yeah. if, you guys, if you're flying at people, throwing, willing to give up your body for it, um, I mean, the ball, the ball can end up on the carpet. It was, it was very, very physical. And, and I remember the op so the path, the option game kind of was somewhat like a pass game mm -hmm. in this regards to where it really, really spread the field out. Yep. And one crease could break for, you know, if one person didn't do their job. On defense, against for sure. Option, yep. uh, it was a total team defense. And uh, if one person didn't do their job, it, it could break for a long run or a touchdown. Yep. So, uh, real, real team oriented and... Uh, you know, I I will just say this. I'm always still to this day embarrassed about the accolades of recovering the ball. Uh, the hard, hard work core reality is we had a we had a lot of everybody on that defense. You know, we just had a we had a great group of guys. We had a great team defense that everybody had each other's back 100 percent of the time. Yeah. Jeff, you know, uh, Jeff Hansen, you know, fun stuff. Jeff Hansen's the guy that laid the wood to Sims to fumble. I got on a ball, and Tim Fisher always says, he was our cornerback, and Fisher always says, you know, if it hadn't been for me, nobody would have known about you. How do you mean that? I'm the with him at the table. <laughs> oh, like so we, uh, we had a lot of fun. We never took each other too seriously, but it was a privilege to be on the team with all those guys. Yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah. we're And personally, Dave and I grew up, you know, playing catch with our dads i mean it was option football so you grew up playing catch you know pitching the ball to each other you didn't in nebraska in the 90s you, you didn't throw the ball over and it was it was uh it was all side to side with your we, dads we all learned how to yep. flip that ball with our thumb exactly and, exactly you spent more time flipping the ball absolutely yeah dave dave and i were on uh, quarterbacks in high school dave did whip me so we I, <laughs> buried 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 but yeah we spent tons of time just flicking it to each other that's that's what it was both hands right hand left hand yeah. you're good to go uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Well, I, and Governor, I want to be respectful of your time, but one of the, the last questions I want to make sure we, we cover, because I think now that you're in the governor's seat, I think the question um, that Zach and I always have is like, how big and how important Nebraska football is to the state of Nebraska from an overall economic standpoint? How central or how you know important is the overall game that, that's, you know, the football itself? Well, it's a great question. I think that uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, I get the privilege to be out and being around great folks across the state. And it's, it's really fun to start having good conversations about belief of mm -hmm. Nebraska football coming back or, uh, talking about women's volleyball mm -hmm. and, and it has a big impact. I mean, when we were on our trade mission, uh, I think we left the, the was August 31st and we left a couple of days after that in Seoul, Korea, and in Tokyo. Everybody knew about it. That's right. And talked about it. And so my point is, is because of Nebraska athletics, because of our incredible athletic program, which was totally built on the backs of Bob Devaney and Tom Osborne, we have one of the most financially sound athletic programs and, and, and winning. Nebraskans love winning. We will support anything and be there anytime. And for our economy, when that builds positive energy, right? When there's positive energy, we all can believe more. And there, hey, there's no business we can't start and do and compete anywhere. And I guess that's that's what I see across the state. And uh, maybe <clears throat> in all 93 counties, we have so many people that have taken incredible risk, entrepreneurial spirit, and work incredibly hard. 
and they've created incredible careers for people. Mm -hmm. And the one thing we have to do is we just simply all have to brag more. We have to get comfortable being uncomfortable bragging because uh, that's the key for growing our economy. So we keep every kid. I'm focused on our kids. We, we've got a lot of kids to lift up. Things have changed a lot. Uh, a lot of kids need us to lift up so that uh, they can have a chance to be a Husker or they can be a part of a business and create a career that uh, uh, changes their trajectory. And I've been asked, what's your dream as governor? Kids ask you great questions. And dream's really simple. If all of us can be positive, pull every kid up, get them in trade schools, go to the university, whatever the right fit is for them, uh, and then we make sure they understand what incredible careers there are in Nebraska. Uh, these We can have a thriving middle class in every community in the state, whether it's in urban settings or the rural, we have thriving middle class everywhere. <clears throat> Poverty has to get uh, taken away in Nebraska. I'll work day and night to uh, make that happen. And uh, Husker Athletics, Nebraska football being successful is a key part of that happening. Absolutely. Right? It's, a, it's a key part of it. Absolutely. Athletics are the window to the rest of the world. They, they, they are. And you know what, guys? I'm not a terribly well-traveled guy, but anytime you go anywhere, Mm -hmm. in the world and you have your red on you know our brand is there people want to talk about it probably running the fan yeah. like yeah. Uh, it's great oh, there's, yeah and there's you know nebraskans so amazing we've got nebraskans doing incredible things all over the world the message is simple we don't need <clears throat> this is the best place you know again it's another thing we take for granted right yeah the safety the safety of the safest place to live in, in nebraska great quick story uh I was out in Burwell mm -hmm. and, and tell all Husker fans next year, the end of July, the last weekend of July, the new stands will be built. The Burwell rodeo is over a hundred years old. Yep. It's the greatest, uh, it's the largest rodeo in Nebraska. It's a great celebration of agriculture yep. to go out that last weekend. I think they start Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It'll be a, a, a new 10 or $11 million stands. It's going to be iconic. But I was out there and uh, talked uh, to a group of, uh, we were doing a ribbon cutting or something, and I talked about how incredibly safe. And I said, you know, I don't, I don't lock my pickup. We don't lock our door. And the mayor of Burwell said, well, of course we don't lock our pickup. Somebody might need it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's the way it is in the rest. I love it. Yeah. The, the governor, I, we really appreciate being on. I think that's a perfect way to, to finish things up. That's what Zach and I are doing. We're putting our, you know, our, our hard work and our education to work. We're trying to save the program. We're trying to build up the pipeline through this jerky business, through us guys, through any other positive energy we can. So it's a great way to, it's a great message for you. And, and we really appreciate you coming on here today. So thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for what you guys do. And the pipeline is on its way back and uh, your jerky is going to make a big difference. So keep it up and uh, go big red. That's awesome. awesome. Thanks, Governor. Go Big Red.